Next, I'm going to reposition this particle field so it's inside the environment. So I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to make sure I've grabbed that instancer of the geom of the particles and I'm going to move it in. So it's going to be right about there. That looks pretty good. You know, it's going to kind of come through the walls there. And then, I'm also going to try to animate it a little bit. I'm going to have the particles kind of go downward as a group. Just to get like it's floating towards the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have that selected. I'm going to come down to frame 1. And then I'll hit the S key to set a keyframe. And then I'm going to make sure I go all the way to frame 200. And I'm just going to move it down. And then I'll hit another S key. And you can see the particles are moving downward in the scene. Cool. I like that. So I've added a little bit more animation to that instancer. Now it's time to bake out the objects to animation. So I'm going to take that instancer and I'm going to bake it all that animation onto the objects itself. So that's what I'm going to click on under Utilities from the MASH network. I'm going to go to Bake Instancer to Objects. It's going to bake out the translation rotation and scale for all these particles again you can bake out just a single frame or an animation that's what we're going to do so i'm going to hit that button this is going to take probably a few minutes to bake out depending on how many objects you have so that should be uh, fine now i'm going to pause the video and when it's done i'm going to continue Now we're back and you can see that all the animation has now been baked down to keyframes. So every object is keyframed on every frame in the timeline from 1 all the way to 200. I'm going to get rid of this uh, bake instancer tool and the utilities. We don't need that anymore. We're going to come over to the outliner and you can see the outliner has a new group with if i open up that group you can see all the objects inside of that currently it's hidden so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide that instancer right here so i hit Control h to hide it and then i have to go inside the group itself and select all the objects in there so i should have about 342 and then i'll hit shift h to reveal it and you can see that's all the particle filled with the baked animation. Now, I do want to talk about a little bit why I only have about 300 or 350 um, pieces of geometry for the particle. It, it comes down to a limitation with Toolbag. Uh, if I come over to the MASH network and I go to the distribution node, you can see I went with a very specific number with the grid when I first built the particle system on the X, Y, and Z. Uh, for some reason, there's a limitation in Toolbag on how many objects you can bring in at once, and it it's about a threshold of about 300. So that's part of the reason why I built the grid at this specific um, uh, amount, because Toolbag is only going to bring in so much. So I just wanted to clarify and why I don't have more than... Um, 350 uh, points because tool bags just not going to be able to bring it all in so again just a clarification all right now that I have everything baked out I'm gonna go to the outliner I'm going to select every individual particle so I'm just gonna do that in the outliner I'm just gonna hold shift and I'll start at the bottom and then I'll select all the way up to the top and then I'll also select the group also 
So everything inside of that group and the objects, make sure you all highlight it. And then we're going to export it as an FBX, FBX animation. So I'm going to go to File. And then I'm going to use the Game Exporter. And in here, I want to use the animation clips in the Game Exporter. I want to make sure we have the export set to Export Selection. And then in here, I can go to Clip Name. And I can hit this little plus. And it's going to look at the timeline and say, oh, I have animation from 1 to 200. And what am I going to name the clip? So I'll just name it dust right there and then I can go to the settings here and I can pretty much I can leave everything the way it is it should work just fine uh, we can also bake the animation here also which is uh, convenient but I tend to you know with the working with a mash network and an instancer I typically would say uh, do it with that utility inside the mash network that works a little bit better uh, then once this is built, uh, type, file type, we can do binary or ASCII. It's up to you. And then FBX version, I always go at least down to 1617. I don't usually do the newest version. And then where do you want it to go? So I'm going to send this to a cache file in my project directory. That's fine. I'm going to choose that directory. And then I'll name it dust again. So we'll probably name it this clip dust dust and I can always clean that up later in the naming convention now I'll just hit export and this should take a few seconds to do it all right looks good and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go open up tool bag here's tool bag and what I'm gonna do is go up to the file and I'm gonna say import model and I've already got it. I found my directory. There's the cache file. There's dust dust. Uh, I can also rename that just to be a little bit more specific. I'll just name it dust. And then I'll just click on that and hit open. And this will take, you know, a few seconds for it to load. Now it's loaded in, and as you can see, in the outliner inside a tool bag, you can see it made a group with all the objects in it. And again, I'm, it was able to select them all and bring it in. So again, there is going to be a limitation to it. This was able to uh, you know, bring it in this time around. But do uh, remember, if you get really high numbers, uh, it tool bag won't import them in. So be careful with that and then you can see all the objects have come in and since we've already put a shader inside of Maya it brought that shader into the materials menu over here inside a tool bag and you see called dust shader I can click on that and here's the color that we set um, I we don't need it no normal maps or um, gloss maps we can even set this to roughness and then set the roughness to low. We you know, don't need an albino map or reflectivity map. I can just set this to none right here. And then what I'm going to do is I can change the color. So if I want it to be a little bit more bluish and darker, I can do that right here. All right, cool. The other thing we can do is we can play with the emissive. We can turn that, that on and then go down the glow and then turn that to blue. We can really kind of play with that a little bit. All right. There we go. Hit OK. Um, I've made the particles a little bit bigger than normal so you guys can see it on screen a little bit but I want a little bit more control over the size of the particles and what we're gonna do is we're going to use Photoshop to make a little image of a particle because just changing the size of the particles 
inside a tool bag is not going to work because it changes the whole individual object all at once. You could individually go inside each one of these and change the size, but that's just super tedious to do. And if you can't, if you go over to the group and try to change the scale, again, it changes the position of the particles too, and then makes them cluster together more. So that's just not going to work either. So making an image inside of Photoshop of a dust particle is going to give us more control over each individual, uh, the size over each individual particle. So let's bring up Photoshop real quick. Here's Photoshop, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top, go to File, and I'm going to say New. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my width and my height and my pixels is set to a pretty low number, 256 I, by 256. I could go 128 by 128. Now let's do that because we don't need much resolution to pull this off. And that's fine. And then the other thing I want to do is background content. I want to make sure that is set to transparent. And then I'll hit OK. And there it comes. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to go to my brush tool I'm going to right click and I'm going to drop my size of my brush a little bit uh, somewhere around maybe 90 pixels or 100 pixels right, right around there somewhere perfect I'm going to make sure it's a soft brush and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to just paint with white. Make sure your opacity for your brush is set to 100 and I'm just going to click down a few times in the middle. And that's it. That's all we got to do. All we got to go back up here. Let's go to file and then we're going to save this out and I'm just going to call this again dust ping. So the ping is going to keep the transparent um, format and I'm also going to go to format and select ping and then I'm just going to hit save and then make sure you you know default settings should be fine here in the ping settings and all you have to do is make sure that this image goes into your uh, directory in your scene to make sure it loads correctly whenever you load your um, tool bag scene so once we've got this saved we're going to go back to tool bag and we're going to go down and find, oh, actually up the top, go to the materials menu, pick dust shader. And right here under transparency, this should have been on none. We're going to go to transparency, click this down, and we're just going to set this to cutout. And it's going to give me some parameters. And all I need to do is go to the alpha map, click on the square, and then go find my dust particle right here and apply and then once that's dropped in I can control basically the size of that dust particle so you can see right here now I'm playing with that alpha and I can make it a little bit so I can make it bigger or smaller and I can even play with the threshold too and that will give me a little bit more control and they're not as harsh in the scene all right at this point we can render out the scene the way it is or we can also do an animation because remember there is animation on these particle fields so if I come down to the playback in tool bag and hit play you can see the animation on those particles is running and you but you can notice it's going pretty fast so if you had a scene with a lot of ash uh, happening, this could work pretty well. But uh, I definitely want it to slow it down. So the way you can do that is to come over to the group that holds all the dust particles and click on it. And you can go down to the options and go to model animation. By default, playback speed is set to 1. So this is the speed that that was inside of Maya. If I want to slow this down, all I got to do is change this manipulator and say, uh, let's do like 
and now the particles are going really, really slow. If you want to speed it up, you can set it to a larger number, like five. And you can see now that's starting to look a little bit more maybe like snow at this point. But for what I want, 0.3 works just fine. So you can play with that playback speed and give you a lot more control over the animation. Once you're done, you can render out, go to capture, and then render out a video of this if you want to. But for what you guys are doing, or what you guys, depending on what your purpose is, you can just do a still capture of this. So you could sit here and watch and find the perfect frame that you want to render out, and then just capture it inside a tool bag. Once you've done that, um, looks, uh, you got what you want. This is how you uh, make a floating particles inside of Maya and then bring them in the tool bag. Hopefully you learned something. I'll see you guys next time.